everyone is excited. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy is everlasting. We come to bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh, my soul, and everything that is within me. I will bless the Lord. Do me a huge favor. Go to somebody that you didn't come to church with, church with and give them a good hug, and tell them, say, I am excited to worship with you this morning. Come on, take the next few moments. Go to somebody that you didn't come to church with. Give them a good tight hug. And tell them, say, I am excited to worship with you this morning. Hallelujah. Bless your name, oh God. Thank you, Lord. Now, if you are excited to give God praise and you are excited about the God that you serve, somebody open up your mouth and give God a shout of praise. Are y'all not shouting enough? Come on, open up your mouth and give God a shout of praise. Come on. Come on. Put those hands together right now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Come on, it's real familiar. When I think you're good, you're good, and your love, your love, and kindness, and kindness, and I know, and I know, your grace, your grace is giving me life, giving me life, giving me life. I see, when I see your face, your face over me, over me. I'm so grateful, I'm grateful, and I know, and I know, that my Savior, my Savior is giving me life, giving me life, giving me life. Your When you get when you get your mindset to do right, the enemy seems to want to attack you and come against you. But how many of you know that your best is still yet to come, and you're blessed by the best, and that's Jesus Christ? How many believe you this morning? How many of you know that your best days are still ahead of you? Come on, did you believe that this morning? Come on, Miss Ty, can you help me sing that one more? One more time, one more time, one more time.
You're giving me life sufficiently, life abundantly, overflowing, overwhelming, more than I could. Sing it out. You're giving me. Say that one more time. Say, you're giving, you're giving me life. Come on, how many can confess that to Jesus this morning? Say, you're, you're giving me life. How many of y'all believe that in your heart? Say it one more time. You're giving me life. I just like that one more time. Say, you're, you're giving me life. Say, you're, you're giving me life. Say, you're. Come on, if you believe that this morning, come on, let's erupt this place with praise. It's not for me, but it's for somebody that's done something for you that no man on this earth can do. And his name is Jesus. How many believe that this morning? How many know he's worthy this morning? Come on, worship him in this place. Worship him in this place. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, how many believe he's doing it all again for you? Circumstances might come against you, but he's doing it all again. Come on, tragedy, but he's doing it all again. Disappointment, but he's doing it all again. Come on in this place. Hallelujah. Hey, Jesus. Come on, don't stop your praise. Open that up. Come on, lift up a shout of praise and shout, God, you're doing it all again. Come on. Come on, now can I see you? Put your hands together like this with us. Come on. Put those hands together. Come on. Now as you're clapping your hands, just begin to open up your mouth and say, God, you're doing it all again. Come on. Come on, shout it like you know. God, you're doing it all again. Come on. God, we love you today. Song is real simple. You know what it says. You make the blind man see. You make a lame man walk again. You cause the dead to rise. And that's why we dance to liberty. Because you're doing it all again. I need somebody to put a praise in the atmosphere. Because he's getting ready to do it. Come on, say Because you're doing it all again. We're going to declare it all over the room. Say You make the blind man see. Say You make the blind man see. Right. And that's why we dance to liberty. Why we dance Come on, clap it up and say, Cause you're doing it all again. Oh, 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 o
still healing. Yes, you are. You're the same God that still created. See, you're the same God. How many know that He's a chain breaking God? Say, You're the same God. Now, somebody put your hands together and shout. Yes, you're doing it all again. Yes, you're doing it all again. Yes, you're doing it all again. We see you moving like never before. in the room say never ending never ending the same God come on give God a wave off and say you won't change it you won't change the same God and we give you praise today you never ending the same God now can we lift up our hands and call it by his name you are Jesus say you are Jesus Said you're doing it all again. Said you're doing it all again. Yes, you're doing it all again. Yes, you're doing it all again. Yes, you're doing it all again. Now, can we just put our hands together as a sign of amen? I need somebody to clap like you got the devil in between your hands. mind one thing in your mind that you know God is capable of doing for your life right here in this season you got what you need in your mind if you need a healing if you need something straightened out with your family get it right here in your mind if you got it on your mind let me see you wave at me now when we put our hands together the next time we're gonna put our hands together as a sign that it is so y'all ready come on clap your hands There it is. I feel it rising, church. I feel faith rising, church. Break the music. Let the hit. Now as you're clapping your hands, just open up your mouth like you already got the victory. It's here. Jesus is 
sing, God. surrender. All over the room, both hands lifted up to heaven. If he did it before, he can do it again. The same God right now, same God back then. Let your faith rise as you're lifting up your worship. anything to say, just say, God, I love you. God, I thank you. Open up your mouth. Every voice should be raised now. Come on. He'll heal you so you won't have to take that medicine for anxiety. How many believe it in the room? He'll heal you so you won't have to go on dialysis anymore. How many believe that you serve the same God in the room? Let your faith rise as you're lifting up your worship. Yeah. 
he'll do it again. Somebody said he healed cancer, so I know he can do it again. Somebody said he healed diabetes, so I know he can, he can do it again. If you're expecting something from God, how many know that he'll do it again in your life? If he did it for her, he'll do it for you. If he did it for him, he'll do it for you. Come on, he'll do it again. Somebody, he'll do it again. Hallelujah. lifted all over this place. Hallelujah, Jesus. And while they're lifted, say this right here. Say, Lord, you're mine. 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 Lord, Come on, say it again. Mine. Say, Lord, you're mine. Lord, you're mine. Say, Lord, you're mine. 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 Say, Lord, you're mine. Lord, you're mine. Say, Lord, you're mine. 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 Lord, you're
injustices that we can do to our personal lives with Christ is to allow our praise to be based on how we feel. That when we feel a certain emotion or when we feel a certain feeling, that then we respond in praise. If that's the only time that we praise is when we feel like it, then we will live in the deficit repeatedly. But if we can learn how to praise from what he has said, not from our experience, not from how I feel, not from what's going on around me, but if I can learn to praise from what he has said, if I can stand on what God has said, and praise from there it will change the trajectory in my life and it will cause the magnet to be flipped because see if you flip a magnet it'll repel the other magnet it'll repel what's going on but if you can praise from where God says what God says it'll flip the magnet in your life and you'll start to attract things you'll start to cause things to move into your life but if you only wait and I feel like that we've done a great job of shifting the atmosphere, but it's all been predicated on waiting on a feeling to push the rest of it overboard, to push the rest of it in. And what I hear the Lord saying is that hallelujah is the highest praise. Not when I've got a doodad on my back, it's the highest praise. Not when I feel all this stuff in my gushy spots, but hallelujah is the highest praise. Hallelujah is the highest praise. Hallelujah is the highest praise. Sing with me. Hallelujah is the highest praise. Hallelujah is the highest praise. I praise from right there. Say, hallelujah is the highest praise. Hallelujah is the highest praise. Say, Hallelujah is the 
the highest praise. Hallelujah is the highest praise. Lift up your voice and say hallelujah. Hallelujah is the highest praise. Hallelujah is the highest praise. Sing it again. Hallelujah is the highest praise. Hallelujah is the highest praise. One more time, say. Hallelujah is the highest praise. Hallelujah. Miracle work, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Yeah. Come on, follow me. We make miracle work, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Some of you need to sing to your situation. Say, Waymaker. Waymaker. Miracle work, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Come on, lift up your voice, say, Waymaker. Waymaker, miracle work, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Just the drums, say, Waymaker. Waymaker. Y'all sound good. Come on, turn the volume up just a little bit. Say way maker. My God, that is who you are. That is who. That is who you are. 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 Lift your hands all over this building. Father, we adore you. We love you. We trust you. Oh, uh, yeah, I, saw, I felt a little kickback on that. We trust you, God. We especially trust you with things we don't understand. We trust you. Ah. Uh, Come on, praise from that spot right there. We trust you. Mm. I trust you even though I don't understand. I trust you. I trust you even though it doesn't make sense. I trust you. I trust you even though it seemingly contradicts what you've told me in your word. I trust you. I trust you even though it goes against every prophetic word I've ever gotten. I trust you. Come on, keep praising from that place right there, that place of trust. Right now it's moving around the room. Reach up and grab it, pull it into your life. It's hovering in this place, in a spiritual bubble. Just reach up and grab it. Reach up and pull it into your life. Come on, come on, come on. I'm not just happy with an atmosphere shift. I'm happy with chains breaking. I'm happy with deliverance. I'm happy when all those things that you walked in here with are no longer in your now. Oh, we praise you, Jesus. We praise you, God. We praise you, Jesus. Praise you, God. Jesus, 
on the screen. someone by the hand. I want to make a point of contact and make agreement. Don't let anybody be alone. It's a physical form of a spiritual reality. We hold hands to symbolize what's already been taking place spiritually. Our hand holding is to symbolize agreement and unity. Father, we make agreement now that everything that we've been praying for, that everything we've been believing you for, everything that we've been praising from in this past couple of moments, we declare it is now a reality in our lives, not because we wish for it, but because your word says it so. This is not a wishful prayer. Prayers are not wishes that we hope will come true. Prayers are things that are scriptural declarations that you have already said are our reality, are our inheritance, are our portion, and it's us coming into agreement with them. God, we now declare that earth and heaven are in alignment. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. In earth as it is in heaven. In heaven, healing flows. It does in earth through the power of the blood of Jesus, so we declare healing. In heaven, there is no mind-binding spirit, so we declare that our minds are free in Jesus' name. 
In heaven, there's no fatigue. In heaven, there's no wear, worn outness. We declare that we are strengthened and empowered by your presence, by your spirit. In Jesus' name, we declare it now. Everything, physical healing, now. In Jesus' name, physical healing, now. Dilemmas, problems, things that they've been encountering for maybe even years. God, I speak that it ends now in Jesus' name. We come against depression in Jesus' name. We come against depression in Jesus' name. We come against that which would lull us into apathy and complacency. And we loose the passion of your spirit. We loose the passion for holiness in Jesus' name. We loose, Father, the attributes of heaven, the fruits of the spirit, as Galatians 5.23 tells us. We loose those in Jesus' name. We loose the gifts of the spirit. We loose joy. We lose joy in Jesus' name. We lose joy in Jesus' name. Say, Lord, 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 Lord may it be in earth as it is in heaven. Say, Lord, may it be in earth as it is in heaven. Your kingdom come, your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. In earth. As it is in heaven, in earth, as it is in heaven, in Jesus' name. Now put your hands together and clap. Because clapping is another way of saying amen. It's a bodily way of declaring agreement with what you have just declared, in Jesus' name. Come on, don't stop clapping. In Jesus' name. Now add a shout to it. Lift up your voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you just say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Adaroha, yeah. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of Jesus. High five about three or four people and say in earth as it is in heaven. High five your neighbor, say in earth as it is in heaven. Yeah. Good morning, Harvest. Good morning, Harvest. Anybody's excited to be in God's house this morning? Oh, that was a little weak. Anybody's excited to be in God's house this morning? That's more like it. Well, my name is Jaquan, and I'm going to be giving just a few announcements for you all. Is that okay? All right. So, uh, bear with me, because I have my script. Don't judge me. Amen? <laughs> all right, so I want to first welcome our first-time guests. Any first-time guests joining with us this morning? Will you just kind of wave at me? Any first time guests? No? Yes. We welcome you, Harvest. Will you put those hands together? We just want to say that we welcome you. Any first, second, or third time guests, we say welcome. And we have been praying for you. They have, been, uh, they have placed a number on the screen. Um, if you could just follow the prompts and text that number, uh, we won't be scamming you or, or spamming you or sending you unwanted text messages or emails. Instead, we will be sending a bit of information of who we are and why God has placed us here in the north e northeast region of Jacksonville, Florida. Um, now, if you don't prefer text, um, there is a a connection card. Um, you should have, when you came in, there should have been a connection card on your seat. If you could just fill it out, same thing, to the best of your ability, and turn it to one of the team members right in the back at the tables right before you exit. Amen? And I promise if you do it uh, digital or physical, you will receive a gift. Because like I said, we have been praying for each and every one of you. And um, there, Pastor said there has been 999 churches that you passed by this morning. You listened to the Lord and said, well, we are going to harvest. So we thank you and we appreciate you for that. Um, to our guests and to anyone 
one that has been coming. You don't have to live life alone. In fact, we are here every Sunday morning at 1030 a.m. and even on Wednesday nights for our family nights at 730. We even have started a few weeks here at Harvest Monday night prayers. Somebody bless God for that. Has anybody joined uh, our Monday night prayers? And I can say that prayer is the most important part of our Christian walk. And I encourage you every Monday night from 6 to 7, uh, we come in here um, as a family and as a team and we fight the enemy together. How many know that the enemy is on attack and prayer is the only way that we can get through? Amen. All right, now if you've been coming and getting this good word and this uh, good gourmet meal, you will then be what we consider is one of our family members. Here at Harvest, we would love to have you. And if God has been speaking to you saying that this is the place where you should be, I encourage you to sign up for Next Steps. Anybody, everybody shout out Next Steps. Next Steps, formerly known as DPAP, is simply a way for you to take the next course of weeks and to learn about Harvest and the vision God has placed on our leader's heart. In fact, this coming Sunday, everybody say this Sunday. November 3rd, where we'll be kicking off our next steps with breakfast with the pastor. Come on, you can clap your hands for that. Amen. Pastor Dave will be in there speaking and sharing his heart with each of you. This will be an opportunity for you to ask questions ask, um, and to learn about Harvest over the course of weeks with next steps. All right. So at the end of service, I believe there will be a sign up in the information table for you to sign up for next steps. Okay. And that's for any first, second time or third time guests. Amen. Also on next Sunday, we will begin our new series, The Generous Life. Somebody shout out The Generous Life. Come on, shout, shout it like you mean it. Say The Generous Life. I am excited to dive into this word, and I kind of spoke with Pastor Dave about it, and I'm um, asked how he would like for me to approach this. Um, we're not just going to be talking about money, but for the next four Sundays, um, as we approach this Thanksgiving season and the holiday season, we really want to live like Christ and follow his example. He gave. Somebody shout, he gave. Even if it's a hug, if it's money, if it's encouragement, we want to live like him because the word says, for God so loved the world, he did what? He gave his only begotten son. So I'm excited to dig into the word um, starting the next Sunday um, as we dive into learning and being a, a, a generous person, living a generous life. Amen? Lastly, for the past few weeks, we have been collecting candy for our trunk or treat. And today, I have been instructed to announce the winner. Anybody's excited? Who do you, on the count of three, I want you to shout out who you think won. All right, one, two, three. All right. Can we raise the lights? I want to see everybody. So on the count of three, I want to, I want to give you all, I want to get a, get a drum roll in because I'm going to get ready to, to, to release the winner. Y'all ready? Now, whoever wins, I want you to jump up and scream real loud, okay? Are y'all ready? Give me a drum roll. Drum roll. Drum roll. <laughs> there we go. All right, and the winner is? The Harvesters. <laughs> Come on, Harvesters. Stand to your feet, and can we give a thunderous clap to our seasoned saints? We thank you all, and we love you all. They won with 85 pounds of candy. It was, it was a close neck. It, it was really, really close. But like I said, the Harvesters came in uh, full force with 85 pounds of candy, okay? Um, and at the end of service and for, for the rest of the year until the next time that we do this, you all get bragging rights as your reward. Amen? All right. <laughs> um, now, that does not mean, so the competition is over, but that does not mean for you to stop bringing your candy. So um, if you all have registered your trunks, and for those who still would like to register your trunks, please head over to the information desk table and register. But please, please, please bring more candy. I was talking to Pastor Chelsea and Pastor Ben. I heard that there would be tons and tons and tons of kids here on this, when is it? This Thursday. So I want you to bring all of your candy so that we can be a blessing and to minister to our kids and to our families um, because that's what it's all about. It's all about giving love. Amen? So this includes our announcements, and I hope that that was ample amount of time for you to gather your tithe and offering. Um, anybody excited to give? You got your tithe and offering? All right, can we lift it up to heaven? Um, how many of you know that this is indeed more, of, there is indeed more a blessing to give than to receive? We actually just talked about it. And here at Harvest, we stand firm on that. Uh, we are about the upkeep of God's kingdom. So now I want you to raise your tithe, raise your offering, uh, whatever you have, get something in your hand, raise it up to heaven and say, Lord, I thank you for my offering. God, I pray that you just expand it. Touch every person right now in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you for the giver and we say bless you and you can come and release now to give. God bless you.
the Lord. Come on, if we could have all of our ushers up here. Fantastic. Don't they look good this morning? I love our, I love our diversity of gender and age. It speaks of the vision of this house. Extend your hands toward the front. Father, we thank you for blessing the gift and the givers. We thank you, Lord, for abundance and increase and overflow. Shout abundance. Shout increase. Shout overflow in Jesus' name. Now slap your hands together one more time. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. At this time, we're going to be releasing all of our Harvest Kids, and this is also going to include, if you're interested, our sixth graders as well, because they're going to be going over our Christmas production that's coming up in just a, it's shorter than I realize it. I mean, we're less than a, oh, well, a little bit over a month away uh, from that. And so if all of our kids can, can go out uh, this back door right here at the, at the very back, uh, Miss Leslie and Blake and Dana, they're waving their hands. So all of the kids, including our sixth graders, uh, can go with them. And then all of the rest of our middle schoolers can go out this door with Daniel and Michaela. They're going to take you guys next door to the Family Life Building and, and do our Harvest Middle. So all of our middle school students who are not participating there go with Michaela and Daniel. And they're going to, they're going to do their worship experience over there. Praise the Lord. It's good to see you. Look over at your neighbor and say, I was the best looking person in this room until you came in. Hallelujah. Well, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I am, I'm amped up spiritually. I, uh, I've been looking forward to today. And um, Pastor Jennifer is, is, um, taking care of everything at Baker Campus today, so she sends you her love and greetings, and so does our Baker Campus. For all of you that are watching online, we are so glad that you're partnering with us in this way, uh, in this uh, venue, if you would, opportunity. Uh, we're excited. Thank you so much. Uh, share. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's welcome our, our digital audience. Also know this. You can share those services from our Facebook page if you want to, and that will take uh, what we've broadcast, and it will share it to your page, and then all of your friends and so forth can see it. Uh, I really want to do very, be very intentional with boosting our social media presence um, because that is a, and I'll be honest with you, y'all know that sometimes I got to pray through to use Facebook just like y'all do. I got to pray through to use Instagram, and there's different elements. Uh, the older I get, the, the, real, the more I realize I'm getting older. Uh, and, and, and there, you know, certain nuances and things like that uh, might get on somebody's nerves or what have you. But there is an entire generation that receives all of their information from social media. Whether it's real or not, they still receive their information from social media. They believe the fake news. Okay. And understand something. Fake news is not just something that's being broadcast from the White House. It's being broadcast within the church house as well. There are, there are Christian agencies that are spreading fake news as well. Okay, I'm, I'm, I, I've got another message to preach this morning, so I don't want to get way late into that. Help us, though, by sharing the feed, sharing the service, doing different things like that, and getting the word out, because we are excited about what God has called us to do. Um, Jaquan did a great job this morning on announcements and, and transitioning. Thank you, son. I appreciate that. Um, we, we want to consistently put new faces up in front of you, especially those individuals that have a call on their lives, uh, and give them an opportunity to continue to do what God's called them to do and develop. Because how many of you realize it is not easy to lead praise and worship? It may look easy for a person who's been doing it for an extended period of time, but for someone who has never done it before and is good in front of people, it's an entirely different animal to lead praise and worship. And then it's totally different when there's no music going behind you. It's just a little melodic stuff that Christian's playing right now to then get up and do announcements when y'all are tired from praise and worship and you're looking like, would you just hurry up? All right, it's, it's not easy. And so make sure, especially when we've got new people, but even when it's my face up here, make it easy on us and smile. Make it easy on us and, 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 and you'll elbow your neighbor and say, look, whatever. Just make it positive. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because it will, it will make the delivery go that much better. All right, now I'm going to get into, into serious stuff. I need six more people to register their trunk to participate in Trunk or Treat. I need six more people. So stand up right now. If you have not already registered your trunk, but you're like, okay, you've twisted my arm, I will do it. Stand, please. Otherwise... 
Thank you so much. I've, absolutely. We got one lady here at the back. Anybody else? I need five more people. Five more people to register their trunk. If you want me to preach today, I need five more people to register their trunk. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Melissa. I appreciate that. So now we just need three more individuals. Um, actually, no, we need four more individuals. Okay, now we need three more. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Diana. Uh, anybody else? I just need three more people. Three more people. Before I start voluntolding people. Anybody else? I just need three. Thank you, Mama Nell. I appreciate that you were going to be one of my voluntolds anyway. Um, I just need two more people. I just need two more people. Oh, come on. I don't want to have to call y'all. Oh, Brother Tommy, I love you. Absolutely. I just need one more. I just need one more. One more. And listen, y'all can even go in together with somebody else if you want to. I just need one more. I need a total of 20 trunks so that we can minister to the population of children that come out here because we did not have enough people last year and the people that we did have were working their tails off to try to get things going because we have such a massive sea of kids. I need one more person. I have not forgotten. I need one more person. I got, I got husbands and wives looking at each other. One more. I just need one more. Anybody? All right, Chris Jackson, it's you. <laughs> Monica can, can do it for you. Or y- y'all got, I know you got, you got to work that night. And, and you got to, okay. All right, they got to work that night. I need one more. I need one more. Come on. I just need one more person. Brother Clayton, you're going to do two cars? All right, very good. Brother Clayton's making up the difference. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. All 20 of y'all that are clapping now, thank you so much. Sincerely, um, well, let me, let, me, let me go. Two more things, and then I'm going to get into what I was about to get into. Um, our next steps. A lot of people have asked us through the years, what is this D-Path thing? And it, at first, the curiosity behind it was good, um, but it, it always meant the discipleship path. But as we started doing some talking and some investigating and so forth, we decided that just to make it simple and easy, we just want everyone to understand it's our next steps class. And so that's the reason why we made that change. Uh, we're still going to continue to do it. We've just titled it something different. Um, I, you're going you're gonna to learn, if you don't know this already, about us, that we're going to do something for a certain season of time, and if it needs to be tweaked, we're going to tweak it. I don't want to do something that is not successful. If we do something that's not successful, we're not going to do it for very long. Okay? Wow, y'all are slipping into a coma much faster than you normally do. Okay, so uh, why? Because we don't want to waste our time. Okay, I'm I'm one of my only friends that still has a Wednesday night. Mm-hmm. That still has, that still has a. Just turn it down on the monitor, please. Uh, that still has a Wednesday night service. I will continue to have Wednesday night services until they're successful. But if they steep, if they keep slipping in attendance, we're going to kill it. I don't want to kill it. It's my favorite service. But if no buns comes. We're not going to do something and run up the electric bill when no one's here. Okay? And I have a certain benchmark that we work toward for Sunday mornings and Wednesday nights. I pray that benchmark every time I pray in here. Oh, you're that kind of pastor. You're all about numbers. No, I'm not all about numbers. But God is, is very interested in numbers. He devoted an entire book of the Bible to it. Every time Jesus fed people, you know how many people he fed. Why? Because numbers mean a lot to God. Okay? And and so if they mean a lot to God, they mean a lot to me. That is the greatest opportunity for influence. When we have a church service and everyone's here together, that is our greatest opportunity for influence. But if no one's there, there's no influence. I know I'm I'm offending you right out of the gate. 
I need you to understand, though, that we are, we are making our, our, our forward strides with intentionality to further the kingdom. And if things don't work, we're not going to just try to make them work. We're going to change. Does that make sense to you? Now, for all of you that are offended because I talked about nixing Wednesday nights, know that I don't want to. You will be the one to make that decision by your attendance. And I realize that we have an off day today. We have a lot of people that let me know that they were going to be out of town. But, but, but still, we need to participate together. Us participating together causes our level of agreement to rise when our agreement rises, faith goes to the next dimension. And when faith goes to the next dimension, what was once impossible is now possible. Jesus needs agreement. That's the reason why when he went into Jairus' house and there were individuals that did not believe that Jairus' daughter could be healed, he asked them to leave because he needs agreement. If Jesus needed agreement, do you think that we can do it without agreement? We got to have agreement. And so I really want to encourage you to, to be participatory in, in what is happening. Uh, next step is, is an awesome new name for something that we've been doing all the while. We just changed we just changed the name. We're calling it something different. Say next steps. next steps. All right. Now, now that I've already upset you with me, I now want to thank you for last Sunday night. <laughs> thank you so much for the appreciation. I thank you so very much. Ray, Esther, you guys worked your tails off. I'm so thankful. The food was scrumptious. I had to fast all week long to lose the weight that I gained last Sunday night. It was an incredible night. For those of you that gave us cards and, and gifts and you hugged us and you spoke special words to us, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You just don't know how much that means to us. And right now our thank you card is in publication. I don't like to go buy generic thank you cards. We put our mugs on it so that y'all can take us home with you. And so those are in publication now. We'll be able to hopefully give those out to you next Sunday. But thank you so very much, Pastor Jennifer, and I really, really, really appreciate all of the gifts and all of the hugs and all of the love. It is definitely appreciated. Amen. All right, let's get into the Word. Uh, grab, grab your Bibles if you've got them. If you don't have your Bible, don't worry about it. We're going to be in Luke, the 24th chapter, and then we're going to scroll back to 2 Samuel 6. 2 Samuel 6. What a lot of you might not realize is that Pastor Jennifer and I, um, this month, on October the 7th, we have officially been the pastors at Harvest Ministries here in Jacksonville for four years. This is our four-year anniversary, and uh, we're excited about that. God's brought us a long way in four years, and we, we've still got a long way to go. We're, we're believing, God, that we're going to see our city one for Jesus. Say cities can be one in Jesus' name. So we're going to be in Luke 24, the 28th verse through the 32nd verse, and then we're going to uh, flip over to 2 Samuel 6, 16. That's where we're going to be. If you don't have it, don't stress. It's going to be on the screens. Would you stand to your feet for the reading of the word? Luke 24, 28 through 32. 2 Samuel 6, 16. Luke 24 says, As they approached the village, Jesus walked on ahead, telling them he was going on to a distant place. They urged him to remain there and pleaded, Stay with us. It will be dark soon. So Jesus went with them into the village, joining them at the table for supper. He took bread and blessed it and broke it, and then he gave it to them. All at once, their eyes were opened, and they realized it was Jesus. Then suddenly, in a flash, Jesus vanished from before their eyes. Stunned, they looked at each other and said, Why didn't we recognize it was him? Didn't our hearts burn with flames of holy passion? Say passion. While we walked beside him, he unveiled for us such profound revelation from the scripture. Second Samuel 6, 16, as the ark of the Lord was entering into the city of David, Michal, daughter of Saul, watched from her window. When she saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, she despised him in her heart. I'm going to preach to you for just a moment this morning on the power of passion. Father, I pray today that you would preach this word through me the exact same way that you preached it to me. 
expound upon this subject and this topic just like you did to me privately, may you do so publicly now so that everyone knows that they're not just hearing a preacher regurgitate a pre-prepared word, but that God, that they would realize that they are hearing a mouthpiece declare the words of God so that everyone would know, myself included, that you have spoken to us today Nothing short of that, it's just you. Open the ears of the hearers, the minds of the perceivers, so that we can hear and perceive what the Spirit is saying to the church today and leave this place more passionate about our purpose and our call than we ever have been in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen. You can be seated in this presence. The past two Wednesday nights, I have been unpacking a mini-series entitled unaware and I don't have time to talk about that this morning I don't plan to talk about that but as I was in the midst of that word this word passion just consistently leapt off the page as I would read it and I heard the word of the Lord talk to me and say I want you to preach the last Sunday in October and I want you to talk about the power of passion At the pastor appreciation dinner, I had so many individuals that would say publicly or that would come to us privately, and they all referenced passion. They talked about how passionate Pastor Jennifer and I are to do what God has called us to do. I have always been a very passionate person. Even when I was doing the wrong thing, I was passionate about it. How many of you know individuals that have that drive and that level of passion? How many of you would say, I am that individual, I'm a very passionate individual? Yeah, 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 I I believe that. Not near enough hands in the building, but hopefully by the end of the message that'll change. The dictionary defines the word passion as intense, driving, or overmastering feeling or conviction. Strong and barely controllable emotion. Part of the vision of this house is for us to overturn walls and mindsets of tradition that would perpetuate bondage and remove and replace that wall of tradition with passion. That we would be passionate about what God has called us to do. That when we wake up in the morning, our bodies might uh, try to fight against us because we're tired, but our passion would attach itself to our purpose and push us out of our beds and push us out of our homes to accomplish that which God has placed before us. That we would do life passionately. In studying and going through various things, I came across this article in Forbes magazine and I I grabbed this caption and you're going to see it on the screens. It says, it's the passionate people that take the biggest risks, step up to the plate and help to make the biggest leaps forward within teams, companies and organization. That's Forbes magazine. Let me read it again. It's the passionate people that take the biggest risks. How many of you know risk takers? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm one of those guys. I'm one of those individuals. I'm, I'm, I'm a risk taker. Now, I'll be honest, there's been some times where it's been calculated risks, but I'm a, I'm a risk taker. But it's passionate people that take the biggest risks, step up to the plate, and help with the biggest leaps forward. I had six people that decided to give in to passion this morning and help us out for trunk or treat. Why? Because it's important. Why? Because it's an opportunity to show our neighborhood that we love them without expecting our neighborhood to come inside the doors. It speaks to our neighborhood. We want to reach you where you are. We want to reach you with the love of Jesus in the form of candy and in the form of two booths that we're going to have. One is a prayer booth and one is a connections booth where we're going to talk to individuals about what God has called us to do and invite them to be with us. But we want them to know we're here to love on you. We're here to show you the love of Jesus on a day that's typically referred to as the devil's day. Y'all know how I believe in the kingdom. You know how I believe in redemption. I don't believe that the devil has rights or claims to anything. I believe in the redemptive power of the cross. If Jesus can redeem your mind, if Jesus can redeem your spirit, if Jesus can redeem your body, we can redeem a day. Say passion. Um, well, hold on, before you throw those next slides up. Um, it would only make sense that passionate people would give birth to passionate people. Right? Does that make, that make sense? So my wife and I are very passionate about what we do. And my daughter, my baby, 
is excruciatingly passionate about the things that she's involved in. And she's always been that way. Fill up one of those pictures. We were, we were doing some work, and I, I know that that's, that's a, a kind of far away, and you might not be able to make it out, but that's Jada, and she's probably about three years old in that picture. And I don't know if you can tell, but she's got marks on her face. Well, she decided that day that she was going to be Kitty Softpaws. She had been watching Puss in Boots, the movie, and Kitty Softpaws was the female character in the movie, and so she wasn't going to be Puss in Boots because she's a girl, and girls have power. My daughter, at the moment that she started realizing the uh, difference between male and female, she would always ask me, why is it a man that does that? Why can't a girl do that too? I didn't, I didn't generate that in her. That was my daughter's passion about women stepping up and doing what God divinely designed for them to do. So she saw Kitty softballs. So what does she do? She goes into my drawer and grabs a permanent magic marker. Passion will drive you to do crazy things. She grabs a permanent magic marker and she makes whiskers on her face because she's Kitty softballs. Well, this is where it started. Show me the next slide. This is where it ended up. She went digging through everything in her room, and she found stuff, and we made a little sword for her because she said, I've got to have a sword if I'm going to be Kitty Softballs. Now, you, you, you got to understand something. This was not just what she did at home. We went to Walmart as Kitty Softballs. We went to the restaurant. As Kitty Softpaws, sword dangling as she walked. And people would look at her and she would say, I'm Kitty Softpaws. The passion in her only grew. Show the next picture. The passion only grew. And now she decides that she is going to be one of the pony, uh, my little ponies. I can't remember which one it was. And so she got a purple wig and she wore it for weeks. We recently were in a place where she was dressed up, and she informed me. She said, uh, uh, Dad, tonight, as I'm dressed up as this character, I just want you to know I'll be in character all night. And I said, no, I would like to spend some time with Jada, not this character. And she said, well, I'll do my best, but I will be in character. <laughs> Why do I reference that? Because my, my baby is a very passionate person. She's passionate about what she does. She's passionate about what she gets involved in, even when it's not a healthy thing for her. She's still passionate about it. I am wondering where this passion that the disciples said leapt inside of them when Jesus spoke. I'm wondering where it's gone. Because a lot of times our body language and our, our, our overall demeanor says, you just need to be thankful I'm here. You don't know the week that I've had. You don't know what's been going on in my life. And you don't know the level of passion that you're missing out on. Because passion is a choice. It's not just based on how you feel. It's based on what's burning inside of you. The disciples paid attention on Wednesdays. We were talking about unaware. I've shared that with you. But the disciples are walking to Emmaus as they leave Jerusalem, and they're talking about all of the things that have been taking place because it's the, it's the week after Passion Week. It's the week after Jesus was crucified. And, and they said, you know, the women said that he had risen from the dead. And they're having this conversation. And y'all know the story. Jesus walks up beside them, and they don't know it's him. And the, the Bible says that it was a 17-mile walk from Jerusalem to Emmaus. You know they didn't get there quickly. And Jesus starts unpacking scripture and unpacking things. And the Bible consistently says in this passage in Luke 24 that they were unaware. It says it again. It says they were unaware that it was Jesus. And it was only until Jesus enters into the house with them and he breaks the bread and he starts passing it out. It was only when they went into a familiar place. Everybody say familiar place. It was only when they went into a familiar place that they recognized him. Jesus is wanting to take us to places that are not familiar, but he still wants us to recognize that he's there. Does that make sense to you? Jesus wants us to be aware that he's trekking with us every step of the way. So he gives us experiential awareness. Everybody say experiential awareness. Experiential awareness is exactly what the disciples felt. When they see it's Jesus and then Jesus vanishes from the inside, then they start to recollect the past. And they start to recall, well, that makes sense. 
Didn't our hearts burn with holy passion as he talked about the word? In other words, we felt the way we felt before when Jesus spoke with us, when he was speaking with us, even though we didn't recognize him, we still felt the same way. So now, because of experiential awareness, these disciples will be able to match that feeling with Jesus' presence. So even when they don't see him, but that feeling starts to manifest on the inside of them, they start, that, that fire starts to drive, mm, he's here. How many of you have ever, ever gone hunting with dogs before? Just, a, just a two or three people in the room. I've never done it either, huh? so I'm, I'm only going on what I've been told. The only thing I've ever killed is a roach and a fish. <laughs> and a lot of people's feelings. But you know, just... There is a dog, when you're running dogs, there, especially in certain types of hunting endeavors, there's a point dog. The point dog is the dog that catches the scent of what they're looking for. All of the other dogs have been trained to recognize the point. And when the point dog catches the whiff, they might not have it. But when the point dog catches it, they follow the point dog. You need to identify point people in your life. That even when you aren't feeling the presence of God, you can look to them to start doing this and pointing in the direction of the presence of God. And even though you might not feel it, you trek with them and you say, I don't know yet where we're going, but I trust the point person. Too often, we just look at other people that have their hands raised and are clapping and we say, well, they, might not, they must not have my problems. As opposed to saying, maybe they have experiential awareness and they're aware of something that I'm unaware of and I don't want to be unaware of it any longer. And so even though I don't feel like it, I'm going to stand on my feet. Even though my body's aching right now, I'm going to lift my hands. Even though I want to go back to bed because I haven't slept in three days, I'm still going to stand and give God praise. Why? Because there's got to be a passion and understand something. I can't make you passionate. God can't even make you passionate. That's a decision that you have to make to allow passion to burn inside of you. You've also got to make the decision that I'm not just going to let it burn. I'm going to have to stoke it. I'm going to have to feed it. Steve Jobs says this, people with passion can change the world. It's a true reality. What I've got to do, though, to, in, it, it, to make sure that it manifests as it should, there's three things. I don't ever give you three points. I'm about to give you three points. Jesus is about to return. He is about to return, but that was a joke. In other words, he's about to come back because I'm giving you three points. Uh, that completely went over your heads. I'm sorry. I will pray for Brother Tommy's anointing to tell jokes because he has a powerful anointing to tell jokes. Three things. Say three things. You have to identify what you're passionate about. You have to identify what you're passionate about. When you identify it, you then have to go the next step and you have to invest into it. So number two is, you know, number one, you identify. Number two, you invest. How do you invest in it? Well, you, you put a demand on it. You, you spend time investing in your passion supply. You also watch, you meter it. You measure it, and when it starts to be depleted, you can't wait until it's empty. You've got to start doing stuff to build it back up again. Otherwise, you'll be depleted, and you'll be trying to fulfill your purpose without passion. And you'll run dry. Number three, you're going to have to increase it. How do you increase it? You increase it by reading books. You increase it by attending conferences and sessions. You increase it by spending time with people who are passionate about the same things that you are passionate about. And really, honestly, what you need to do is you need to find somebody that's passionate about the same things that you're passionate about, and they're more successful than you. And spend time with those people. But see, that requires you to overcome another I word, your insecurity. And that's one that runs prevalent in the body of Christ, but that's another message. But that's a big enemy to passion. Insecurity will kill passion on a regular basis. 
We've got to identify, invest in, and increase our passion about what God has called us to do. We have to be intentional. Say intentional. We have to be intentional with our passion. So you might need to wake up a little bit early so you can invest in your passion. So as you leave your house for work or doing the different things that you have to do, you are doing so passionately. I drive very passionately. Drive very passionately. I talk to people even though they can't hear me. I use hand signals and I use big, big mouth, slow words. Dummy! It's just a bad thing. But, but I'm praying that God would, would, would save my driving ability just as much as he saved my spirit. So I'm trying to submit. So, but but my, my point in all of this is I, I'm a passionate person, but I'm intentional with stoking my passion because I have been passionless before. Passionless is a dull place. It's a lonely place. It's a dry place. It's a place that God never intended for us to linger. What puts us there? 2 Samuel 6 puts us there. 2 Samuel, the sixth chapter, gives the entire dissertation of how David finally brings the Ark of the Covenant back to Jerusalem. Saul, David's predecessor, had no, no thought, no desire, no passion to bring the ark back to Jerusalem. It stayed right where it was the entire time during Saul's reign. But the moment that David becomes the king, he goes after the ark because he understands the power of presence. He goes after the ark. We know he goes after it and does it the wrong way. He's passionate but he does it the wrong way. And the wrong way of doing things caused David's passion to fizzle out. Why? Because the Ark of the Covenant was supposed to be transported on the shoulders of Levites, not on a brand new milk, milk, milk cart that was made in Philistine. Okay? Now understand, David did the best that he could. He bought a brand new one. It wasn't an old, dilapidated, broken down cart. It was a brand new cart. He was doing the best that he knew to do. But passion without revelation will get you in a ditch. That's exactly what happened to David. He passionately goes after this. We know the story. Uzzah reaches out to steady the ark because they're at the threshing floor of Nacon. And, and the ark shifted and it, went, it looked like it was going to fall off. And Uzzah had the right motive and the right heart and everything else. He didn't want anything to happen to the ark. So he reaches out to steady it and he dies. Because even though you have passion... When your passion leads you to do the wrong thing, there are still results. We know the Bible says that no human could touch the ark. Well, what's the story of Uzzah? Well, he's the son of Abinadab, which means father of liberality. Understand that the ark of the covenant had been in Uzzah's house for years. And who's to say that when Uzzah was a little boy that he didn't play on the ark? Because his father was a liberal father. He didn't die all those times. Why did he die now? Because the king, the ultimate authority in the land, was attempting to reestablish order. He was attempting to reestablish the right way of doing things. Up until that point, liberality was okay. The authority figure in Uzzah's life said that's okay. God allowed it. Are you trekking with me? At this moment, though, we are now under a different authority figure. It is not Saul. It is not Abinadab. It is David. And David is passionate about the presence of God. He wants the presence of God no matter what. Because it's the presence of God that got him everything that he's got. Uzzah, pretending like he's in the old season. Acting like he's still in the old season. Acting like he's still attending the church that he went to before he came to harvest. Reaches out to steady the ark with right motives and right intentions. And dies. Why? 
because it's a new season. And the new season is declaring order and rightness so that the kingdom can come. See, I want you to understand that passion by itself is insufficient. You've got to have passion coupled with purpose, which is God's purpose that has God's principles associated with it so that you are able to flourish. Don't be afraid, though, of passion because we're not living in Old Testament times any longer. We are living in grace so don't be afraid to be a risk taker. Don't be afraid to make a mistake, especially in here. If you make a mistake, we're going to lovingly say, hey, that was a mistake. Try not to do that again. You're not going to die. At least we hope not. We hope not. What is my point in this? We've got to have passion that pushes us the right way. I started, though, by talking about Mikhail. Mikhail represents connection to the old season. She represents connection to the past. And she stands not on street level with everybody else who's praising God. She stands from an elevated place, condescending and looking down. And she judges her husband. And in the 23rd verse of 2 Samuel, the 6th chapter, it says, And because of this, Michal lived barren, childless, all of her life. Why? Because the wrong passion can tie stuff up in your life and prevent you from accomplishing the purpose that God put you in the earth to accomplish. So my question to you is, number one, are you a passionate person? Many of us are going to have to do some intentional things to start feeding passion. Some of us are going to have to start changing some stuff because some of the stuff that we're doing is eating our passion. And we need our passion to be strong, to fuel us, to push us. Some of us need to change what we're passionate about. There's some believers in the body of Christ that if they were as sold out to Jesus as they are their political affiliation, we would take hell with water pistols. That's all they can talk about. That's all they can watch. That's all they can be involved in. They're always just watching and talking and posting and regurgitating the political atmosphere, sending videos to people trying to influence them and so forth. No, send a video about Jesus. Pastor Ben made a post this morning. I don't, I don't normally scroll Facebook on Sunday, but I, somebody had sent me something, and I got on there to respond, and I scrolled up to get to where I needed to respond, and I saw Pastor Ben had, had put something on by someone, and I loved what it said, and I tried to memorize it, but I didn't memorize it entirely, but it basically says that Kanye West brought more glory to Jesus this week than John MacArthur. And I thought, wow, that's awesome, and that is so true. And for those of you that still don't know what I'm talking about, you can get on Facebook and find out all about it. There's been a lot of, got a lot of mud slinging this week within the kingdom. Classic example, because when you're passionate about the wrong thing, it'll make you push into the direction of the wrong thing. So make sure you're passionate. And if you're like, well, I need to make sure I'm passionate about the right thing, then submit your passion to someone else. And say, this is what I'm passionate about. How does it line up with your perception of my purpose? But we're afraid to have those conversations. We can't even talk to authority figures when we're upset with them about things. How else are we going to go in and talk to them about passion and purpose and all those other sorts of things? Why? Because the devil wants to keep us locked up and bound. There's a gentleman who has influenced just about everybody's life in this building. At the age of five, his father died. At the age of 16, he dropped out of school. By the time he was 17 years old, he had had four jobs and been fired from all of them. He went into the army, and they kicked him out of the army. Age 20, he gets a job cooking at a cafe Right before that happened, his wife and child left him. 
in an effort to try to get them back, he secures this job as a shorter to cook, and he works in that capacity until he's 65 years of age and he retires. At 65, he is sitting down, retired, but completely and totally unfulfilled. And he says to himself, I have no purpose to live. So he sits down to start writing his will out because he's going to commit suicide. But instead, he starts writing all the things that he wished he had accomplished in his life. When he got to the end of the list, he realized there's one thing that I'm passionate about and that I'm good at. I'm a good cook. So I got a bright idea. What started out to be a suicide letter turned into be the adequate motivation to send him down to his friend's house to borrow $87. He went to the store and he bought $87 worth of chicken and he put his famous recipe together and he fried chicken and he knocked on doors selling fried chicken. And by the time he was 88 years old, he was a multi-billionaire and his name is Colonel Sanders. KFC came out of an individual who realized at 65 years of age what he was really passionate about and decided, I'm going to do that. It doesn't matter how old you are. What matters is that you make the decision that I'm going to invest myself into what God has divinely designed for me to do. There's more to that story because Colonel Sanders was, was raised to know God but was not a believer at first. But as he started to have increase, he knew the principle of tithing. And so he began to tithe before he was saved. He would take 10% of everything that came in, and he would take it to the church even before he got Jesus in the heart. Because he was a smart guy. Because it works whether you serve God or not. I'm so thankful, though, it didn't stop there. He did finally commit his life to Christ and become a very solid believer. What are we passionate about? Invest in your passion. Some of you need to have a tough discussion with yourself and ask yourself, what are you passionate about? What lights your fire? If you can't come up with anything, then you just need to get into God's presence and say, God, I need more than I realized I needed. And ask God to reveal it to you. Because I am believing God that the last quarter of this year, we're going to burn with holy passion. And we're going to see things that we've only dreamed of seeing come to fruition in our lives because we allow a holy passion to ignite inside of us like burned in Jeremiah where he described the purpose of God on his life burned like fire in his bones. So, Father, I pray to you this morning that we would all make a conscious decision to allow our passion to burn like fire in our bones. But may our passion be bridled and intentionally positioned toward what you want for us. Redirect misappropriated passion, Father, and move it in the right direction. May we be passionate for you, passionate about what you want, passionate about your desire. May we have that Davidic passion that pushed him to dance in the streets and become undignified, uh, according to Mikhail. But God, it pushed him to praise you on a level like they'd never seen someone of that level of influence praise. May we be passionate about your presence. May we be passionate about your purpose on our lives. May we be passionate about what you've called us to do. And God, for those that can look in their rearview mirror and see passion in the past but have no point of reference in their now, God, I pray that right now by the power of your spirit that you would reconnect them and that you would remind them of what passion for your presence looks and feels like. God, I pray for them now whatever hurt, whatever pain, whatever incident they encountered in their lives to squash their passion God, I pray that they would get over it now by the power of your grace and that they would be once again reunited with their holy fire passion in Jesus' name. While every eye is closed and every head is still bowed in a moment of personal surrender to Jesus, 
If you're here within the sound of my voice this morning and you do not know where you stand with Jesus or you know exactly where you are and it's not where you need to be and you need to name Jesus as the Lord of your life. You just say, Pastor, would you pray for me? I I need to make Jesus the Lord, the Savior of my life. I'm not where I'm supposed to be. I've been passionate about all the wrong things, but this morning I want to get that order right so that I can pursue God's purpose for my life. No one's looking around. We are not going to embarrass you. Just slip your hand up very quickly, and then you can put it right back down again. I need to make Jesus the Lord of my life this morning. Just slip your hand up and put it right back down. Is there anyone? I need to confess Christ today. I need to name Jesus as the Lord of my life. Let's pray this prayer together. Say, Jesus... I declare that you are Savior and that you are Lord. You're the Son of God who gave his life so I could have life. I believe in you. Forgive me now from all that I've done that hasn't pleased you. And help me to be passionate about you and your kingdom for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. And everybody say with a loud voice. Put your hands together and thank God for salvation. If you did pray that prayer this morning, even if you didn't raise your hand, and you want to let us know that, man, I meant that. I should have raised my hand, but I didn't. Take the I Have Decided card that's right there in front of you and fill it out and give it to one of the guest relation tables that are on either side of the back as you're leaving out the back doors. We're excited about you making that commitment to Jesus. That's why we do what we do is to proclaim Jesus in his kingdom and to do so passionately. Because our motto, our mission statement is that we passionately proclaim Jesus and his kingdom as we love people. That's our MO. Put your hands together and thank God for the word this morning. I want to tell you how powerful my prayers are. My prayers are so powerful that my wife was transported here and is now seated on the front row. That's how powerful my prayers are. Hallelujah. My, my sidekick of passion. Stand to your feet all over the building. Don't forget we will not have... Our normal family night service this week because of our trunk or treat event. We want to give you time to rest on Wednesday so we can wear y'all out on Thursday. Realize that everything gets started uh, by, by all of the standards at 6.30, but some of our advertisement says 6. And so make sure that you've got your trunks in place and that everything's ready to go before 6 p.m. Please don't make us pull our hair out and wonder where you are. Get here as early as you can. Get everything set up. We'll point you to the right direction. That's going to be on Monday night. But I'm sorry, on Thursday night, but tomorrow night, Monday night, from 6 to 7 is our corporate prayer. We need everybody to be in attendance because we see powerful things happen when we pray together. Let me bless you now. I bless you from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. I wish that you prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. I claim abundance and supernatural increase to come and be one with you all the days of your life. And all of your getting, get understanding, don't just discover, but fulfill your destiny in Jesus' mighty name. Hug about six people. And know that Jesus loves you, and so do we. Peace out, Harvest. What's up, everybody? everybody? Thank you so much for watching Harvest Live today. Absolutely. In fact, what we would like to invite you to do now is to hit the subscribe button. That way, you don't miss another message from us. Because we're excited about an opportunity to partner with you. We are. We also would like to give you an opportunity that if you would like to go one step farther in your partnership and click the Give Now link at the bottom of the page, that will enable us to continue to reach out to the people in Northeast Florida and around the world with the message of Jesus Christ. We are so thankful for your partnership, and we're We're glad that you watched. Partner with us again in the future, and we'll see you soon.